Welcome along guys, back in the garage, back on the Ducati project. Well today, in this episode, I'm hoping to remove the swinging arm from the chassis and also the main frame from the engine. This is the day I've been dreading <laughs> since the start of this project, but I've, I'm hoping I've planned enough ahead to make this relatively easy. I really hope so. <laughs> Roll the intro. Is this going to help, Governor? So before we get into all that swinging arm removal, dirty hands and lots of swear words, lots of cursing, let me just show you in the usual format of the new stuff I have for the project. So first of all, I mentioned before quick shifters. I, I've gone for the Heeltech Easy quick shifter and also the Heeltech gear indicator. So that's all arrived and ready to go on. Obviously when I start putting things back together, this will go on. And what I'm going to do is an actual sort of a fitting video. I'll include the fitting instructions as part of the, the rebuild and then do a separate setting up of the quick shifter because you need to set these up. There's some instructions you need to follow. It's all completely tunable via the app on your phone. So I'll do a separate video of actually configuring, setting up and testing the quick shifter on the road. I've also got some beautiful carbon fiber for moto composites let me just show you some of this now i've used moto composite stuff before and i really rate the quality of it the h2 is covered in moto composites carbon so i wanted to use them for the ducati project as well and they've come through with the goods these are their handguards i had a cracked handguard if you remember so i've gone for carbon handguards now these are like a matte carbon finish now these are a matte finish, 100% carbon twill, I think they call it, this, this type of finish. But they're absolutely beautiful. I'll try and rotate them and keep in focus. You get all of the mounting, you know, bolts and everything inside. These are lovely. I'm really looking forward to getting those on, but uh, not today. I've also got the rear um, parts that go on the bike, like the exhaust, the frame covers, I guess you'd call it, on the back, two of those. And, as I mentioned, the tank cover, again, in a, in a matte carbon twill finish. Ooh. So there is the motorcycle. I've done a few things since you've last been here. I ordered the rear hub nut, so I've removed all the rear hub. I've taken everything off of the swinging arm. I've also removed the headstock. I had to wait again and order a special tool to get the headstock off, but I've removed all the headstock, ready for some uh, polishing or whatever's gonna happen to that. I've also disconnected all of the electrical connectors from the engine. So in theory, that engine is now completely disconnected from the wiring loom. So we should be ready to lift the frame off of that later. To get the swinging arm out, I've made myself a tool. Yes, I'm very clever. <laughs> I have opposable thumbs. So I can't take full credit for this. Massive thanks to the chap who sent me the link to the, the swinging arm extractor tool, which he made. Um, sorry, I can't remember your name, fella, but I think this is gonna really help me. Rather than just beating this spindle for the swinging arm to death to get it out, we've made this little extractor tool. As I say, it wasn't my idea, but it's using a bit of threaded bar an old spacer I had from the Supermoto project, a bit of aluminium tube, and uh, I'm basically using that as some sort of puller and a nut on the end, a puller extractor um, tool for the swinging arm. Now, biggest problem with this is I can't do this job with the bike on the ABBA stand because I've got to get the spindle in here and this is in the way. It's all, in, unfortunately, in the way on the stand. So I've got to get the bike off of the stand and onto the engine lift so yeah, this could be a little bit tricky um i'm going to enlist the help of an unwilling participant here is chops jr my <laughs> unwilling assistant <laughs> yeah we've got to lift this whole lot off and put it onto there that's the plan all right okay with some luck Oh, look at that. To me, to you, to me, to you. So this is the video which was very kindly shared with me. Uh, and basically they've done the same thing, a bit more sophisticated than mine. They've put a tubed piece of external tube, the threaded bar goes in the middle 
and then basically that screws into the thread at the other side and you can then wind on it and draw the bolt out as opposed to beating it to death. So that's what I've attempted to recreate here. <laughs> Let's see how we go. So before we start, we need to remove, this is why these bars are threaded, because they have these like little covering bolts. These bolts are just used to sort of hide the big ugly Allen nut behind, if you like. So you get rid of these little covering bolts. And this is why that it's threaded. So these can go to the inside of the rod. Get rid of that. And then we have a big socket in here. I must say, I've been very lucky with how easily things are coming undone on this bike. Very, very lucky. Yeah, that's popping. I think that's actually off of the off of the thread now. So now the idea is I wind my threaded bar into the thread at the other end. I don't know how far you have to go in actually. I guess I've only got going a little way just to capture it from this side. And then my washer goes on there. That little spacer goes on there. Then we wind this nut in. Talk amongst yourselves. Right, ready to do it. Now, I've actually balls this up a little bit. I thought this bar screwed all the way through and to the other side, but it just screws to this side of the nut. So I actually made myself just a little bit, because it's only better to extract it that far. That may be enough, but if, if not, I've got a bigger bar, I can make a longer extractor. Hmm, yeah, I should have done that. Oh well. Call this the Mark 1 version. And then basically, I should just start winding on this. And that should pull that out. Come on, you're, you're impressed with this, aren't you? <laughs> you're impressed, I could tell you are. You thought I was going to be beating this, beating this for days. Trying to get it out. And look what I've come up with, with the help of YouTube and friends. Bloody brilliant. All right, things have gone all loose now. I think we could be, I think we could be there, you know. <laughs> Look at that. It only worked. And this should now lift out of here. It's going to upset the balance of my whole bike, isn't it? Ah, come on out. Look at that. Ah, oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Where's some cigar? He loves it when a plan comes together. What I'll do, I'll just put a few details about this little thing I made in the description if you want to just know what size rod you need, pitch, etc, etc. So, uh, and I'll link to the items I bought to make this. It cost me about 20 quid, this. I think I'll make, I can make an extend, I should have made that longer. That worked fine. It was out, by the time it pulled it out through here, it was out. But you could make that longer in case yours is tighter. I may make a longer bit of tube and keep this as a tool for removing the swinging arm. It may work for other bikes as well. I'm dead chuffed. Okay, so I've just done a slight rejig of the strapping to hold it further down. Because now the swinging arm has gone, the, the centre of gravity shifted and it wanted to swing forward again. So I've just re-strapped it differently. Now I'm going to take off the rear sets um, so it clears access to the frame a bit more. Because the rear sets sort of tuck right round behind the frame. If I'm going to lift the frame off, I want to make sure it's as clear as possible. So get the rear sets off and then I think it'll be ready to try to try and drop the frame off the engine. Oh! These rear sets, of course, won't be going back on because we'll be fit refitting the Sato ones. Blingy bling, bling blings. They're done with. Ah, there we go. Rear sets off. Frame is now clear here. I think I think it's just hold on, held on with some spindles, a bit like the swinging arm underneath these rubber caps. The whole thing should then hopefully just lift away, reeling the engine. <laughs> Maybe time for my unwilling assistant. Get your rubbers off. So this should be a simple matter of just undoing the bolt. Sliding the bar out. 15. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Come on, honey. Oh, come to daddy. Look at that. 
just slides out. No corrosion. Unbelievable how lucky I've been so far. While we await the unwilling helper, this is a groundbreaking moment when that frame comes off of that engine and we're just left with an engine. Then that's the point where we start cleaning, we start rebuilding, we start putting things back together in better condition. I'm looking forward to start sanding the engine down, getting it cleaned up, getting the casings off, get them sent off to factory projects to be Cerakoted, and then start putting things back together beautifully. I've been comp getting completely obsessed with this project. I I'm, I'm terrible, if I've got a project like this, it take occupies my mind and I'm thinking about it 24 hours a day. Well, 20 hours a day, four hours sleep. I'm just thinking about it all the time, what colors I want to do stuff, how I'm going to tackle certain bits of the project. I, I get a bit obsessed with a project like this. This was just going to be a quick cleanup of the engine. It's developed into a complete rebuild and it's going to be an incredible thing at the end of this, I hope. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. But yeah, this is a big moment, the frame coming off is basically the starting point where we can start putting things back on, start cleaning things up. Oh, it's exciting. Where is he? Come help for five minutes. He's seen it. Burgers. <laughs> Burgers. I could be laying on the floor with a bike load on top of me coming to him, come and help me. He's too busy playing the Xbox. Come on. Here he is. Uh, I should. Uh, Put on the floor down here, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Brilliant. Yes, eh? Thank you. All right. There we go, guys. One frame, one engine. I'm now one of those guys with no longer how do I have a motorcycle. I just have a frame, an engine, and a box of bits. <laughs> I used to have two bikes. Now I'm one of those people with just a shed full of bike bits. <laughs> but there it is, the engine, the engine. I can now concentrate on taking bits off of the engine. Well, not too much, well, the, the oil feeds and the oil cooler. What I'm gonna do next episode is start getting my sanding discs out, cleaning up all this horrible paint which is flaking off, put the, obviously, you know, mask things off, put the first coat of primer on. I'm just going to prime and paint over all these casings and then take them off at the end and then send them off to be blasted and Cerakoted. So there we go. Next episode we will start prepping this engine for paint, taking the last few remaining bits off of it, it's gone really well. I, I can't believe how easily this bike came apart. I, I don't, I was, I've bought myself impact drivers, all sorts of blow torches to just get undone stubborn bolts, but I've not really found any. There was one on the rear caliper where I needed to get the blow torch on it. That was it, and that came out relatively easily. I've been so lucky with how this bike's come apart. I think it just goes to show it's low mileage. Uh, you know, it's never been apart before, so everything is done up to the correct torque from the factory. So there's no gorillas been working on it over tightening things. Well, until now anyway. <laughs> but there we go, guys. Thanks for watching. Next one, things are going to get a bit more technical and the less just taking things off. I'm going to have to use my brain and try and remember how this bike goes back together at some point. Mm, I will probably need the service manual for that. <laughs> but thanks for watching, guys. Take care. I'll see you soon.